to believe we're on to episode number 10 of the Belleville Sens podcast. Coming down the home stretch, it's fitting. Ten games or so to go in the season, and uh, this week it'll be a couple of important matchups uh, on the weekend against Bridgeport and Milwaukee. We've got a history of hockey, Belleville Bulls night coming up on Saturday as well, but we also got to recap you on the week that was with some uh, crucial wins against Utica and Cleveland, and then a loss to the Monsters as well. Hi, everybody. David Foote and Joel Vanderland here with you uh, again a day later than usual because it's been pretty busy around the office. We're getting ready for History of Hockey Night. We are continuing on the playoff push, and season seat renewals have begun. So it's a, a very busy place around Belleville Sands headquarters here at the Quinney Sports and Wellness Center. And uh, we'll talk about all of that uh, throughout the course uh, of the next, what, maybe hour or so uh, as we recap you on last week and bring you up to speed on what's happening this week uh, with the Belleville Senators. Uh, how's it going, Joel? We were on the road uh, last weekend, so I feel like we've barely seen each other lately. It's going well. A bunch of school visits at the start of this week, which I've been involved in, and those are always uh, a lot of fun and always great to see uh, smiling uh, faces ar- around the community. So uh, it's been a busy week, like you mentioned, but uh, also a very important week for this hockey club. Yeah, and I have to thank our players for their involvement in the uh, community programs like Sens at School, especially when I send them to the wrong school. Uh, I sent Igor Sokolov and Brendan Saulnier to Brighton when they were supposed to go to Tweed, and those guys, like the troopers they are, uh, took my mistake and said, all right, footy, no problem, we'll go, and uh, i got to make it up to them probably somehow. But uh, those guys really uh, powered through, and, uh, yeah, a bunch of school visits. We were at uh, our, our fitness partners at 45 this week. A couple of the guys were working out, Matt Wedman and Jared Lucas Savages, and uh, a couple of the coaching staff was there too, Ben Sexton and, and Fred LeMay. Plus, we had the World Elite Intro to Hockey program. This It has been a busy, busy week. So, again, that's why we're coming to you uh, a day later than uh, than normal uh, here. But uh, either way, um, lots going on, lots of good things on the horizon, and uh, a trio of pretty good hockey games as well, I would say, for Belleville last week. we got to go all the way back to Wednesday uh, when Lassie Thompson uh, had a huge, uh, huge night, uh, a late winner, and Cole Castles perhaps had a bigger night in that 4-3 win over the Utica Comets. A game again, Joel, where the Sens just really showed their resilience. They did, and Utica Comets are a team that's given them a lot of trouble over the course of, of this season, so to get that win against them, to get in the win column this year against the Utica Comets, that, that was a big relief for this hockey club. Like you mentioned, Cole Castles gets involved in all four goals with assists, and then uh, the man of the hour, the man of the week, Dylan Ferguson, uh, really puts his stamp on the hockey game, making some big saves uh, to keep the club in it, and then, as you mentioned, Lassie Thompson, who's just been on a tear of late, scores with 13 seconds left. Yeah, and um, just, again, another example of this team uh, never quitting, never letting the circumstances of the game dictate their attitudes or their effort level, and um, uh, that huge goal by Lassie Thompson putting the exclamation mark on things um, late in the game. And, and it's it's it hasn't been just since David Bell took over that this team has, has – been this resilient, and I keep using the same word over and over again, but it's been all season long. Uh, They've just battled through everything uh, week after week after week, and here they are uh, earning themselves still a a spot in the mix for for the playoff places. Yeah, that's exactly it. You don't see many teams that make upwards of almost 200 transactions now, and they've used over 40 players. Um, Be this tight, this, uh, this close together, and um, they're really pushing for a playoff spot. They're in a playoff spot now, and I think that a lot of that goes to management, being able to, to fill the spots um, adequately. And then again, the coaching staff, and it started with Troy Mann. Now it goes on to David Bell, and he's really put his players in a position to, to win hockey games, put his players in a position to feel comfortable on the ice and um, always kind of know that they can win hockey games, which is a key um going even back to that Utica game no one foot I think scores 25 seconds into that hockey game Jake Lucini comes down the next shift scores a breakaway goal so it's just their their ability to battle back from from any type of adversity has really been endearing to this fan base and um, it shows just how much they care for this uh, hockey club as well yeah and uh, I think that really played into the game on Saturday as well when the Sens um, I will say controlled the play. They were outshot by the Cleveland Monsters uh, on Saturday uh, in the first of that 
pivotal doubleheader, but uh, a 4-1 victory, and Dylan Ferguson uh, had an outstanding performance. Uh, Angus Crookshank ends up getting credit eventually for a goal that looked like it was Roby Arvente's, and there was some discussion about that, but um, just a, a perfect way to continue that momentum, uh, extend their point streak to, to seven games, and uh, and start that weekend off on a winning note. Yeah, and I think you mentioned it a bunch of times on the broadcast. That's a tough building to play in. That's a tough team to play against. I tell you what, it's not a tough building to call a game in, though. It's unbelievable there. But yes. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's a beautiful facility, like like you mentioned. But the Cleveland Monsters, they play a heavy style. They, they get in on the forecheck, much like the Belleville Senators, and um, they really controlled that game. They let their goaltender make the saves he needed to make, um, let him see the puck. Uh, when Dylan Ferguson's hot, as we've seen in the NHL now, too, not a lot's going to beat him, and uh, uh, he got beat. I don't. I have to look at the box score. Under a minute left or so um, when the Cleveland Monsters struck in that hockey game. So he was pitching a shutout for most of the game, allowing his team to do what they needed to do. So um, uh, an outstanding performance. He gets some depth scoring from Mitchell Hurd, gets his first uh, with the Bell Centers, and then Matthew Wedman absolutely rips a puck and Good to see him getting back healthy because he was a big part of this hockey club last season mm-hmm. as they made their push to the playoffs. And I know David Bell has been a big fan of his for a while, so it's nice to see him getting healthy and uh, making an impact because uh, as a forward, you want to score goals. And he does a lot of the dirty work, and good to see him get rewarded. Yeah, uh, let's actually – we're going to talk about uh, the Sunday game as well. You also mentioned Dylan Ferguson and – uh, his NHL performance, we have to talk about uh, that story because it is uh, an incredible, incredible story for a guy who was ECHL bound and now, um, you know, plays to his potential in Belleville, gets himself his first NHL start uh, and win. But before we get to all that, you mentioned Matt Wedman played in uh, his 100th career AHL game uh, on uh, the weekend and uh, had a chance to catch up with him before Sunday's game uh, to talk about that. Fieldhouse, and we're with the uh, Sens forward Matt Wedman, who played his 100th American Hockey League game last night. Uh, congratulations on the milestone, first of all. <laughs> Thank you. I actually didn't even realize it was my 100th game, so uh, that was a nice uh, accomplishment. Yeah, they'll sneak up on you like that <laughs> the longer it goes. Um, uh, what's the season been like for you uh, in a general sense? Obviously, the, the lengthy injury layoff and um, maybe not playing as much as perhaps uh, you expected after last season. But what's the year been like for you to this point? Yeah, I've had my ups and downs, but uh, I definitely injury uh, hindered my year a little bit. But uh, now I'm just looking forward to to getting back uh, playing and getting back in the rotation and uh, winning some games here. Uh, you signed your uh, contract for this season pretty early on in the summer. Um, was it nice to have that kind of stability leading into uh, the season? And uh, how has this year maybe met up to your expectations um, after last season? Yeah, and, uh, free agency is definitely a, a stressful time in the summer. So is, anytime you have a contract offer from a team you want to play for, you're going to take that, and it takes a little bit of weight off your shoulders. But, uh, no, I'm excited to be back here in uh, Belleville, and hopefully we can uh, make a little run here at the end of the year. Yeah, um, uh, how much is, is your experience from last year's stretch drive kind of playing into things um, and the situation that this team is in right now? Yeah, we're definitely in a similar spot than last year. Uh, I think last year we proved to the league that we, we can do it and we can be a playoff team. So I think uh, this year we're on track to do that that same thing. Um, what is it about uh, the Belleville Senators uh, and that made you kind of jump on board again real quick in, in the summertime? And uh, what is it about this organization that uh, uh, that you enjoy so much uh, about playing for? I think the biggest thing is the staff. They're, they're great. They're very supportive, always wanting you to develop. Um, taking care of you every day, treating you right, and I think that's the biggest reason I came back. Um, speaking of the staff, what's it been like to go through the coaching change um, for a guy who was here all last season as well? Yeah, Belzy's done a great job of transitioning the team to a new uh, leadership, and uh, I think he's done a great job so far and showing in his uh, record so far. Yeah, absolutely has, without a doubt. We're chatting with Suns forward Matt Wedman. Um, you missed a bunch of games due to injury. Uh, how difficult was that um, time frame for you and um, how did you uh, maybe keep yourself busy or, or spend that time? Yeah, definitely being out for a couple months is never easy. Mid-season, guys are kind of ramping up towards the end of the season and I'm just trying to get my uh, game speed back, but it's a, it's a process and I'm taking it day by day and I, I think I'm getting better every game. And what was the most difficult part uh, about the recovery? I would say not being able to be on the ice since it was an ankle injury that I can't be skating every day and, and you definitely lose a step uh, being out that long, so it's 
it's been a it's been a struggle, but uh, I'm working on it. Well, uh, legs looked all right yesterday when you scored that uh, that goal. Um, Want to do a little bit of our uh, behind the B uh, rapid fire questions with you here for uh, a couple minutes. Uh, so we'll start with um, again your returning guy, favorite uh, food spot in Belleville. Ooh. I'd have to go Greek Oasis. Oh, that's an excellent choice. That's a great choice. Uh, the last song you listened to on your uh, on your iPhone, I imagine. Ooh, what was the last song I listened to? Probably Jimmy Cooks by Drake. All right, all right. Uh, what's your favorite vacation spot? Uh, I got a trip planned to uh, Cancun this summer, so that's a uh, definitely a favorite. Yeah, just, you can't mess with Cancun <laughs> without a doubt. Um, who's your favorite athlete? Favorite athlete. It's got to be Tiger Woods. I think there's been a few guys yeah. who picked Tiger for sure. And uh, favorite TV show? Breaking Bad. I was, I've ever watched that one a couple times. Yeah, that's, uh, again, can't miss with Breaking Bad. Uh, Woods is all over it. Um, I guess just looking forward to this afternoon's game, um, how important is this? I mean, I don't think it needs to be said, but how big is this game and, and this uh, next run of games for this team? Yeah, it's huge. We're uh, competing with these guys for a playoff spot, and I think every game down the stretch now is a is a playoff game. So we gotta we gotta have that attitude going into every game. And uh, what do you see as the keys to picking up another win here this afternoon? I think playing our, playing our game, sticking to the game plan. Uh, we had a good win last night, good road win. Goal backed us up really well. Fergie played well, but I think we gotta stick to our forecheck and and playing good in the D zone and uh, good in the breakouts. And I think we'll be uh, successful. All right. Thanks for the time, Weds. Congrats again on the milestone. Thanks, buddy. Sends for Matt Wedman uh, scoring in his 100th game on Saturday. A uh, 4-1 Senators win in Cleveland and lots of positivity coming out of that game. The boys were buzzing and came back into Cleveland again on uh, Sunday afternoon to finish off the week and didn't go as well. Uh, you know, Not a terrible, terrible game. Antoine Bebo makes his return after not starting since Family Day and makes 31 saves. Uh, Jacob Larson scored a really nice goal. Roby Arvente and Cole Reinhardt continued to stay hot, but uh, a 5-3 loss to the Monsters, basically handing back those couple of points that they were able to take on Saturday. Yeah, and I think, too, it's hard to beat the same team twice, especially in consecutive days, so you got to take the positives out of it. Like you mentioned, Antoine Bebo gets back in net. Roby Arventi's red hot. Cole Reinhardt's starting to piece some some solid offensive performances together now, and you hope Jacob Larson can kind of start to take some of that uh, that good, positive um, play that he's been been um, known to have throughout his career. He's as steady as they come, and uh, it's always nice to get rewarded with a goal too, and especially the type of goal that he scored from that sharp angle of just uh, putting it right in the top of the corner there. So uh, a tough loss overall, but uh, at the end of the day, they come out of that uh, road trip in a playoff spot, which is ultimately the goal of this hockey club. Yeah, Senators start the week in fifth place. That is the final playoff spot in the North Division. They are one point up on Laval, two points up on Cleveland, both teams with games in hand, and uh, still a couple of head-to-head -head matchups coming up right near the end of the season against the Cleveland Monsters uh, at home for the Belleville Senators. Uh, Rochester just a point ahead of Belleville. Uh, they've got to meet twice more, I believe, uh, once for sure um, before the end of the season. Syracuse five points up on Belleville. Uh, Sens will go to Syracuse next weekend. Um, so still some uh, time to make up maybe some ground on the crunch. Uh, the Comets and the Marlies uh, up at the top of the division. Sens do play Toronto twice still, uh, at least again to finish the season. Might be three times even, um, but uh, likely not going to catch the Toronto Marlies uh, just based on the fact they've already clinched their playoff spot. They've got 83 points, but you know, we're sitting here trying to prognosticate and, and you know, is this team going to get in? Are they not? I think we're in for the same thing that we had last season where the Belleville Senators aren't going to know if they've clinched a spot or not until like the second or third last game of the year. Yeah, I was talking with uh, one of our coworkers, Josh Hill, who's a ticket executive here, and I said, we'll find out uh, the last weekend of the season if mm -hmm. we're in or not. And um, I think that's really going to be what it comes down to. We're going to know... Uh, much like last year, we're going to know in the last weekend where, where teams stand. And I think, too, the, the big thing is the seeding isn't going to be locked down either. Yeah, uh, You're not going to know if you're going to get a bye or if you're going to be in that 4-5 um, uh, kind of play-in game uh, games like we had last year. So all in all, uh, this last, I guess, three weeks or so where they've been able to collect points uh, consecutively and get games to overtime and win games and finish games right has put them in a, a position where they can say now that they're comfortable 
um, being in the playoff conversation, which is what uh, everyone wants to be at uh, this time of the season. In the conversation, for sure, front and center, I would say, are the Belleville Senators. So in a playoff spot at the start of the week, games coming up this weekend against the Bridgeport Islanders Friday and the Milwaukee Admirals Saturday for History of Hockey Belleville Bulls Night. Uh, We will discuss all of that, and we'll get a little bit more into the story of this man, Dylan Ferguson, uh, after this short break. Ferguson naturally takes our highlight of the week for his diving save after a turnover behind the net in Cleveland. Uh, We'll discuss uh, his performance and uh, maybe a couple of these other feel-good stories coming out of the Belleville Sens in just a moment. You're listening to Episode 10 of the Belleville Sens Podcast on the Belleville Sens Entertainment Network. Ferguson out to cut it. Has to make a decision. It's tangled up behind the net. Comes out in front. What a save by Ferguson. Diving across from the far side to take it away. Unbelievable stuff. See if they show this. They will show it again. It was Luoto getting in, causing some problems. Ferguson lost it. Puck was knocked out to the circle. Fired on and full stretch. So 10 of the Belleville Sens podcast continues the highlight of the week uh, just at the end of that last segment was Dylan Ferguson making one of the many saves uh, that he's made over the last couple of uh, appearances, both in the American Hockey League and the National Hockey League. Uh, Ferg had the night off on Sunday, and um, that's because he was called up to the uh, National Hockey League to play for the Ottawa Senators. Um, we all found out right after the game on Saturday. I'd, I'd finished an interview with him after the game, and then we get on the bus uh, back to the hotel, and uh, everyone's eating the post-game meal at the hotel, and uh, Dave Bell stands up and um, basically tells everybody, the whole team, that uh, Dylan Ferguson's headed back to the NHL. He did play uh, a few minutes in a game for the Vegas Golden Knights uh, some years ago, but this was his first um, AHL start, or NHL start, rather, uh, his first NHL win, he has an incredible, incredible performance for Ottawa. And, um, I mean, what a story uh, that Dylan Ferguson is uh, going from uh, basically ECHL bound to bailing Belleville out in the midst of, of some goaltending troubles, uh, helping, you know, winning games, first of all, helping this team to battle back into the playoff race, wins that crucial game in Cleveland, gets the call up, and then uh, wins, you know, a big game for the also playoff battling Ottawa Senators. Uh, it's been a crazy week for him, and, and again, what a story. It really has, and he answers the bell every time, it seems, which which is great to see. He makes 48 saves, which is just outstanding. Um, third most by, by goalie in his first career NHL start, so um, he's putting together numbers. He's been terrific for the Belleville Senators. He's one of the reasons when we talk about the Belleville Senators being in a playoff conversation, being in a playoff race, the steady play that he's given this organization since uh, that trade has certainly helped this club to to kind of, I would say, kind of calm the waters a little bit at times when, when you're looking at the amount of roster moves they face, the amount of goaltending roster moves they face. So um, great to see him shine in his moment with the Ottawa Senators and shine here and um, from a guy that was almost... Uh, don't want to say forgotten about but just not playing games uh to kind of have this the spotlight now it's it's got to be a great feeling for him and it's got to be a great feeling for the whole organization and a little bit of validation after making that trade too and he's going to stay in ottawa for now uh kevin mandelaze has been reassigned so it's ferguson and sogard uh, up top it is for the time being mandelaze and antoine bebo um waiting to find out if uh if Finished prospect Levi Marilainen will end up making his way over here from Europe after uh, uh, stealing the show uh, over there uh, in terms of rookie goaltending records in uh, in the Liga, and um, he played a couple seasons with the Kings and Frontenacs before then, so it'll be a little bit of a homecoming for him should he make it over here. Um, but um, until then, it's it's. Bebo, who's back healthy, and Mandelaze, who I think has something to prove. Like, if there's one good thing to come out of all these goaltenders needing to play, and I believe David Bell touched on this some weeks ago um, with Mando specifically, it's that you have to follow up the performance of the other guy 
to remain seen, to stay in the mix, to be the next guy that gets called up should a goaltender be needed. A little bit of competition in the goaltending department is not a bad thing. No, it's not. A, and don't forget, Kevin Mandelaze two, three weeks ago, had the same type of performance mm-hmm. Dylan Ferguson yeah, had with the absolutely. Sens. So um, I think the Bell Sens got to feel pretty confident with a guy like Kevin Mandelaze between the pipes. And uh, ever since he came back from his stint with, with the Ottawa Senators, he's been stellar as well. So... Um, it's not a bad thing for him to play hockey games. He hasn't played a ton over the last couple of years. I think he's at 41 AHL games over the last three seasons. So um, for Kevin Mandelaze, you want him to get into these meaningful hockey games, which he is now, and um, kind of say, hey, lead us to the playoffs. You and Antoine Bebo are the guys here. And like you mentioned, maybe Levi Marilainen makes his way over too, but he's still a very young goalie as well. So it uh, it'll be nice to see see Mando take take the load here because he's a guy that um, we've been kind of waiting to see him be healthy and, and and play meaningful games and I think he's the type of of guy that has a chip on his shoulder as well that he wants to be the the type of goaltender that can um, play consecutively um, kind of take the net for himself after seeing Mad Sogard do it and, and some of these other guys in the organization. And hey, who knows? Um, you know, if uh, if the goaltenders get healthy in Ottawa, we could see one or both of either Ferguson or Sogard back here in Belleville again. Likely not within the next week or so, but you never know. I mean, uh, obviously stranger things have happened. Stranger things have happened this season. So uh, we'll have to wait and see if, uh, you know, exactly how the goaltending picture plays out, especially for these two games this weekend against Bridgeport and uh, Milwaukee, which uh, that's a nice segue into previewing the games this week. These are not divisional games, um, and I think it's the last stretch of non-divisional opponents that Senators will play this season, but um, it's uh, it's still extremely important for the Senators to, to pick up points against these teams, even though they're not uh, four-point games. No, and that's exactly right. And you look at Bridgeport, they're fighting to get into the playoffs too in their division. The Atlantic's um, is awfully tight as well. And you, you look at the top of that division, it's it's a hard division, much like ours. So uh, they're going to come in here. They're playing tonight in Laval. Uh, and then they come to, to Belleville. So they're going to be hungry for points just as much as Belleville is. And they got a good squad over there. You, you look, they're led by Chris Terry, who's one of the all-time great American Hockey League players, Andy mm-hmm. Andrioff's been around forever, um, really putting his stamp on that hockey club. And then uh, they have the AHL All-Star, Ruchelon Ishikov, who's uh, maybe scored the nicest goal oh, yeah. of the season. So um, they're a team you can't take lightly. Belleville struggled in Bridgeport when they went there last time. There's going to be a little bit of revenge on the mind, maybe. Um, to kind of right the ship with that. Well, and let's talk about their last meeting. Because, yeah, Belleville struggled, but that was quite the day. Uh, to rejog your memory, this was when uh, Luke Richardson gets his first call uh, from Queen's University and uh, arrives in Bridgeport at 4 a.m. and is at the rink at 9 a.m. for practice. And at the end of a uh, 11.30 practice, Kevin Mandelaze takes a shot from Mark Kastelik off his foot and can't play, and Luke Richardson has to make his pro debut against Corey Schneider on the other end. That game ended 5-1, and I think at that point, the Sens were you know, completely in a different headspace even, I think. Um, it was, things were not going as well as they are now. Uh, that weekend might have been a turning point uh, for the Senators, and, and I think they're going to put up a much better performance against Bridgeport this weekend than they did uh, back in February. Yeah, I think so too. And it's nice to be home for a week as well um, and, and kind of settle in into these games and get a good week of practice under your belt, no travel, um, rest up. Uh, David Bell, after that game in Cleveland, that Sunday afternoon game, he talked about the stretch that they had been on, the, rust, the roster flex, fluctuation they've dealt with. And he said the the main thing right now is to make sure these guys are healthy for this last stretch. Mm. Make sure that guys are are doing the right things here, and, and that we're making making sure that they can play in all these hockey games. So, I think, uh, like you mentioned, the right headspace that's something that uh, they'll definitely be in going into these hockey games, and um, it'll be interesting to see what they do with their goaltending. Bridgeport, um, they got two two solid net miners in Corey Schneider and uh, Jakob Skarik. We'll see who they start tonight in in Laval. I would assume it would be Corey Schneider, and then they'll have to make a decision for Friday night. But 
they're really fighting for a playoff position. So you could see uh, Corey Schneider take take uh, heavy load here. Yeah, I was gonna say it's um, you know not divisional games, but both teams are battling for uh, just to get in. Really, Bridgeport's holding on to the last spot in the Atlantic. Belleville holding on to the last spot in the North. These are still important points, uh, whether or not you, you're going to give any up to your opponent on the other side. And then uh, that leads us into to Saturday's game, which is, um, depending on how Friday goes, could be a must-win type situation for Belleville, but uh, not so much for their opponent. The Milwaukee Admirals are uh, not quite clinched with uh, 12 games to go in the season, but sitting in, in a pretty good spot fighting for the Central Division crown with the Texas Stars. Yeah, they're a very good hockey club, and and when you look at it, it kind of all starts for them in net, and they've had something that Bevel Centers haven't had this year. They've had their two two mainstays stay all year in net and stay healthy. Uh, Askarov's played 40 games. Devin Cooley's played 22, and both putting up stellar numbers. Uh, Askarov's got a 9-10 save percentage. Same with Cooley, so um, that's a big thing with them is they've been able to ride their, their goalies throughout the season, and we know how much of... Uh, um, a dent that can kind of put in your plans when you're looking around and you're you're calling up Queen's University and you're saying, <laughs> hey, we need Luke Richardson. We need him to drive down to Bridgeport. We need him to, to come to Laval. So they've been able to to have their goalies all year. They've been able to to have some star players kind of break through. Phil Tomasino, who's now with Nashville, yeah, is uh, is one of those uh, hockey one of those prospects you really look to 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 take that next step. Um, Luke Evangelista, same thing. Uh, Igor Finiseyov has been uh, a big power forward for them throughout the season. So they've been relatively healthy, uh, which I think is bodes well for them. And you can see in the record, uh, they've been able to, to put up some really strong stretches of play. Yeah, uh, you mentioned uh, Phil Tomasino going. He's been up and down, but mostly up with the Nashville Predators. Uh, the, that organization, um, the the Admirals and the Preds, uh, they work so well together, and uh, it really is a nice relationship that uh, they have between the two clubs. It's really paying dividends for them, and um, I mean, you mentioned that Milwaukee's been able to stay basically healthy for the majority of the season. They haven't dealt with a lot of the call-ups that uh, a team like Belleville has or, or many others, and it's um, that kind of steadiness that leads to results in this case a point or two back of the division lead with a couple weeks left to go in the season and uh, they've been a really tough uh, fish to fry for the Belleville Senators uh, in their history as well I don't believe Belleville's ever beaten uh, Milwaukee if so maybe once but um, certainly not this season when the Admirals took a 4-2 win back uh, out in uh, Wisconsin so uh, it's going to be an interesting matchup and again the Senators I mean this was October 28th this was three weeks into the season um, right before Roby Yervente got hurt the first time um, Scott Sabrin was still piling up the penalty minutes real early on in the season the Senators have come such a long way since then and I think that's going to make this game a little bit tough to predict yeah and I think too you, you look back and it was kind of the same thing with from that same road trip with with the Ice Hogs, you looked at it and you said, "Well, they're a really good team because they beat us. What was it, eight two? Yeah. Um, Belleville came and, and, and beat them uh, on home ice. So things have changed uh, over the the course of three four months. And uh, not saying that it's going to be an easy out. This is a very good hockey team, and they play very uh, a very physical, structured hockey game like most teams in the Central do. So. Um, but I think if you're the Belleville Senators, this is you're meeting head on here. You're playing the best hockey you've played all year. Um, you seem to have some some continuity now with the lineup. Um, goaltending aside, you've you've run the last three weeks the same six defensemen out there on a consistent basis. Roby Reventi's been healthy. Angus Crump, and scoring and scoring yeah. at, at will. So I think for this hockey team, it's kind of the the old saying control the controllables control what you can do and um if they keep doing that uh, they'll certainly be uh coming out of this weekend probably in a favorable position again so again it's uh, friday night against the bridgeport islanders the ahl affiliate of the new york islanders saturday night against the milwaukee admirals the ahl affiliate of the nashville predators and saturday night is also a uh, history of hockey belleville bulls night uh, we are going to take a real short breather get some notes together and we'll tell you on the other side what alumni are coming back for bulls night uh, we'll also fill you in on season seat renewals which have begun and uh, there's some pretty good opportunities and some cool prizes and even a 
a chance to win your season seats. So uh, stick with us. You don't want to miss those details as we continue on episode 10 of the Belleville Sens podcast. Final segment of episode 10 of the Belleville Sends podcast. David Foote, Joel Vanderland here. Don't forget to subscribe to the show wherever you're listening. Give us a rating and a five-star review would be much appreciated as we continue to bring you all the latest news, uh, notes, and headlines and more from around the Belleville Senators. The hockey talk is uh, out of the way. Again, it's Bridgeport Friday, Milwaukee Saturday. And uh, the front office has been buzzing this week because season ticket renewals have begun. Uh, With that in mind, we're leaving the rest of the front office staff alone, so we'll have to wait another week for the next uh, edition of Get to Know Your FO, which is slated to be with uh, Senior Vice President Business Operations, Preanne Matthews. Um, For now, let's just talk about some of the stuff that's going on this week. Um, Maybe we'll start with season seat renewals. Uh, They are open uh, if you are a uh, current existing uh, season seat member, you can contact your rep and uh, get shored up for next year. Uh, if you do not have season seats and you're interested in buying them, you can also contact us. And uh, it's renewal period, but also, of course, uh, taking on new season seat members as well. And uh, you've had a chance, Joel, to interact with some of our season seat members throughout the course uh, of the year. It's always nice to see those familiar and returning faces at the rink week by week. Yeah, and at the end of the day, it goes back to them. It's it's the fans that that make this all possible, and uh, it's always great to see uh, smiling faces in the in the stands. And you get to connect with these people because you see them Wednesday, you see them Friday, you see them Saturday. So um, it's always nice to to just chat about hockey and um, be in a good spirits, be in a good mood coming to a hockey game. So our season uh, ticket. Ticket base is outstanding. We we see it uh, time in and, and time again that they always show up. They're always making noise and um, they're just uh, they're just a, a bunch of, of people that love hockey like me and you do. So it's it's always great to to chat with them and make their day a, a little bit better with a game of hockey. And um, CA Arena is an outstanding place when it's it's noisy and uh, the fans are on top of you. So. Uh, at the end of the day, it goes back to them being uh, being our supporters and um, helping helping to to kind of create a sense of community as well through hockey. Yeah, and of course, uh, you know, season seats are the best way to get uh, the most bang for your buck in terms of uh, seat price. You also get a bunch of added benefits and um, the one-on-one personal. Uh, support and touch that only our crew of account executives uh, can provide. And uh, one of the coolest parts about this kind of renewal period, this uh, blitz, if you will, uh, is now until May 31st, if you buy your season seat tickets, uh, your season seat membership, or you renew your season seat membership, you'll be entered into a draw to win some weekly prizes. And I'm talking about things like Belleville Sands prize packs, Ottawa Sands prize packs, uh, game-worn jerseys, memorabilia, uh, VIP experiences. There's a whole bunch of stuff that we're giving away uh, as long as you buy your season seat memberships before May 31st. And uh, anybody who buys the season seat package up until that date, along with getting entered uh, to win those weekly prizes, has a chance at the grand prize, which is... Win your season seats back. Win your season seats. We're not going to take you out on the rink and make you shoot the length of the ice at a little hole in the in the board to win your season seats like some teams do. We're just going to flat out give them to you if you're the lucky one to win the contest. But still, uh, more than enough incentive, I think, to get out and, and lock your seats down now. Yeah, it's it's a great uh, initiative, and we we've seen the work that – that our uh, account executives have put in, Alex Pickford, manager of ticket sales, um, the amount of in-depth um, kind of research he's done mm. and, and uh, going through and making sure that it, you're a valued member uh, of this organization when you go and you buy your season seats and he's making sure you're really getting your bang for your buck like you mentioned. So uh, I know on our website we're going to have all that uh, all that information up and weekly emails are going out. Uh, Alex Smith is uh, working hard on those too. So uh, make sure you're, you're connected because there's uh, quite a few um, prize packs that uh, 
you, you, you're going to want to win. Yeah. If, um, cool. if you're not on the mailing list, send an email to info at com. Say you want to get on the mailing list. We'll make sure you are. Um, and, and again, part of what uh, Alex Pickford and uh, the rest of the ticketing team are, are doing is, uh, and have been doing all season long, is talking to season seat members, getting their feedback, um, finding ways to improve that uh, season seat member experience, add value to uh, to your package, and I think they've put a nice plan together to do that. So, uh, again, um, season seat renewals are open. New purchases for season seats for the 23-24 season are open. Uh, we'll have all the info at BellevilleSends.com. And, again, if you buy your season seat package before May 31st, you're entered to win weekly prizes or maybe your whole season seat package uh, will be covered uh, gratis. Uh, and uh, nothing better than free hockey tickets, so you might as well uh, jump on board now. Um, so that's the one big thing that's taken up a lot of time in the office this week. The other thing, and not to throw the Friday night Bridgeport game uh, into the shadows or anything, because it's still important and we'd still love to see the building packed. Saturday night is uh, a night that uh, I think hockey fans in Belleville specifically, but uh, maybe in the broader Bay of Quinney region have been excited about since we uh, announced the details uh, a couple weeks back and the promo calendar back at the start of the year. History of hockey night. Honoring the legacy of the Belleville Bulls, it's finally here, and um, all the work is going on behind the scenes to make that a memorable occasion for uh, for those fans who want to come back and share some Belleville Bulls memories. Yeah, it's something that I think uh, me and you have kind of connected over, um, watching those games, and you were calling those games back in the day, so it's it's cool. It's it's always nice to honor uh, the history of something that, that's meant a lot to, to people in the community. It's mm-hmm. meant a lot to the players that are going to come back was a big part of their lives. And it's always nice to, to be able to put on a show like this. And we talk about going back to our season seat members, giving them something memorable to, to kind of hang their hat on. This is going to be a night that I think we've put a lot of time in a lot of effort. You, especially Bruce Mackey's uh, helped oh. uh, with it oh, as well. Be, yeah. They, it'd be nowhere without Bruce and his help uh, for sure. Um, and I think too, it, it's going to be something that that's going to really put a nice bow on, on the legacy of what the Belleville Bulls were. And um, I know we're we're going through the steps to make sure that it's uh, done right, it's done respectfully. Um, and uh, I think there's even more plans down later in the road to to get some stuff in the arena up uh, to kind of commemorate, um, like we did with McFarland's Pub. So I'm really looking forward to it. The jerseys are. <laughs> outstanding they there. are fire as the kids would say um so i think it's all in all going to be uh, a pretty memorable night for everyone in attendance yeah and uh, it's not uh, i mean you use the expression to put a bow on uh, on the legacy and, and it is it's a, a nice little recognition and um, remembrance of what the belleville bulls mean and continue not meant continue to mean to this community whether they're here or not um and it's also not going to be an opportunity for us to just say okay we've done bulls night now we're sweeping them back under the rug again um we want that uh, that legacy to live on and we want the hockey fans in the bay of Quinney region to know that you know we may be a new team and a new league but uh, you are still the same fans and and we all are you know everybody in our office now lives in belleville or the Quinney region and and this is home and this is the hometown team. We want to recreate those same memories of Wednesday nights at the Yardman. It's you know every single uh, every single home game. So um, this will be a nice way to hopefully tie things together and and maybe remind some people who might have stayed away from the rink in recent years that uh, hey, it's 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 still the same. Um, we're still here representing the city of Belleville, the Bay of Quinney region, in in trying to win some hockey games. Yeah, that's very much what it is. It goes back to, to being a community thing and going to the rink with your friends, your coworkers, your neighbors. So um, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. It's it's about community. It's it's about um, having a, a Friday night, a Saturday night, and, and being able to watch some hockey, relaxing, enjoying the, the type of, of of game that we all have grown to love throughout our <laughs> throughout our life and from, from young to old and uh, I think at the end of the day, that's something that we're really trying to to put on a personal level for people is that it's meant to be fun. Yeah. It's meant to come here. It's meant to be a relaxing setting. Um, and at the end of the day, I think that's something that our account executives and uh, everyone in this office has really been been hammering home here is um, 
it goes back to the fans and it goes back to them being able to to come to CAA Arena and enjoy a hockey game, no matter if it was the Bulls and. Uh, in the past, now it's the Senators. It, it's the same type of feeling that, yeah. that you hopefully get uh, coming to this building. And there are a lot of connections. Like our current uh, athletic therapist, Craig Belfer, worked for the Belleville Bulls. He also worked for the Kingston Frontenacs, Mississauga as well. But um, that's a connection. Our, our current interim head coach, David Bell, coached in the Ontario Hockey League for years. He has memories of coming back to a packed Yardman arena for games. Uh, Mike Boys, our assistant equipment manager, worked with his dad, still works with the Oshawa Generals as for a long time. Um, but Mikey started there, went up to the Sioux, and was with the Sioux Greyhounds and Kyle Dubas for a couple years. He has memories of coming back here during the OHL days. So, um, again, while... Th- this is not the same league or the same team. There are all of these connections um, that uh, that still make this home, and, and we want to hopefully get a lot of that across on, on Saturday. Um, so we've got the gold jerseys, and as we say, they look outstanding. Um, we're going to have uh, all your favorite tunes. Yes, Turbulence will be there. Yes, uh, Wasn't That a Party will be played. Uh, we're kind of stuck on goal song because the team had a bunch of goal songs, but I think we've got something figured out for that. Um, the Bullhead may or may not make an appearance in some uh, way, shape, or form, uh, both the inflatable and the one on the wall. And uh, we've got a list of like uh, almost two dozen uh, now alumni who are going to come back, and, and they heard this game was happening, and they said, you know what, I, we can't stay away. We have to come back to Belleville and be a part of this. And... Um, why don't we rattle off some of those names? Everyone's asking, who's coming? <laughs> who's going to be there? Well, uh, we have the list. We can tell you. We do have the list. Here, I'll, I'll start running down. Yeah, hit me. Uh, Steve Bancroft, Matt Bolesky, Ryan Bennett, who's with Queens now as uh, athletic therapist, uh, Adam and Greg Bignell, Michael Cramarosa, Brent Gretzky, Jake Grimes, Kevin Lalonde, Craig Mills, uh, local uh, former QRD Brody Morris, uh, played for the Wellington Dukes as well. Uh, Mike Murphy, uh, Ryan Reddy, Randy Rowe, Dave Silverstone, Steve Trace, Brad Vaughn, former general manager. I think uh, Maurizio Colella is going to be there. Charlie Graham, uh, the old goaltender, is going to be here as well. Uh, Chris Newberry, a whole bunch of guys. Uh, and uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to recognize the players uh, if anybody was at our Community Heroes Night presented by Bell a few weeks back, um, we're going to recognize the alumni during an intermission. Uh, we're going to have uh, a few of them available to sign autographs and do meet and greets with fans during the intermission. Uh, Aaron Bell um, from Hockey Docs has put together a nice little feature on the Belleville Bulls to, to relive some memories. And I, I think we've done just about as much as we can to really make a, a full night of this. And um, tickets are still available. I know there are some rumblings going around that perhaps it's sold out already. Uh, it's not. There are good seats still available. You can head to Ticketmaster.ca anytime for those, or you can ho- head over to BellevilleSends.com, check out the uh, promo packs that are available as well, uh, so you can come out on, on Saturday. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really excited. Yeah, it's going to be an outstanding night, and I think for for a lot of people it's going to be a little bit of a personal night too as they think back on the great memories that the Bulls uh, gave them, and hopefully now the the Senators are giving them just as many uh, uh, nights out and great memories to kind of lean on. So at the end of the day, uh, it's what we're here to do, and uh, it's going to be exciting. It is going to be fun. That is Saturday, March 25th, uh, against the Milwaukee Admirals, AHL affiliate of the Nashville Predators. But before that, Friday night against the Bridgeport Islanders, the AHL affiliate of the New York Islanders. Uh, As the Sens try to pick up some more points on the divisional race, Uh, we'll have all the games, of course, on the Belleville Sens Entertainment Network and AHL TV. If you can't get to the rink, but boy, would we love to see you. Uh, We also should mention those gold jerseys going up for auction via Dash Online Auctions at 8 p.m on Saturday and uh, we'll donate the proceeds of that auction to local minor hockey programming so uh, you want to make sure you get your hands on them they're going to be a hot commodity and if you want to see them in action Saturday night is the night to do that Uh, Joel always appreciate the time man we'll uh, do this again next week you think I think so. I think right. it's uh, kind of set in stone now. Yeah, and we'll see if we can get the boss on for a get to know your FO. Uh, maybe we will, maybe we won't. You will just have to tune back in again and find out. Uh, for now, we'll say goodbye from the Belleville Sands podcast. For Joel Vanderland, David Foote, thanking you for listening, and we'll talk to you again uh, next week here on the Belleville Sands Entertainment Network.